Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, Hello. okay. Um, so I'd like to begin by having everyone, you've got a little pile of nature -y bits in the center of your table. So you're gonna take this home with you. So choose one that you love. Um, and if you don't see one you love, maybe you could go to another table. Um, so everybody choose one of those. <laughs> and so to introduce kind of my work and the way that I see the world, I wanna share this quote by the author and environmentalist Rachel Carson. So as you think about that little thing you just picked up, one way to open your eyes is to ask yourself, what if I had never seen this before? <laughs> what if I knew I would never see it again? And even though these are like twigs and acorn caps and ginkgo leaves I picked up by my car, I think I could spend the rest of my life working with this stuff and painting it. Um, so like Elson said, I am Laura Paulette. I graduated from Berea College back in 2000, almost 20 years ago, <laughs> and I studied studio art fibers. So I was an art major, but I was not focused on making representational art, and I was, did not enjoy painting. <laughs> so I'm really surprised to find myself making representational paintings <laughs> now at this point in my life. Um, so my work, my job, is to paint botanical watercolors. But I also see um, kind of just my whole life um, as a creative project. Um, so I'm making my life and I'm also making artwork. Um, for my art making practice, I have a very structured routine. And the way that I start my days, my studio days, is I go for a walk. Um, we have 20, 20 or so, 19, 20 acres outside of Berea. And I go for a walk and collect whatever is in season. So like, as you can see right now, there's a lot of cool twigs, nuts, hickory nuts, leaves, um, seeds. And I collect a handful of things and bring it back to my studio. And I draw and paint from life. So it means that I only collect what I can deal with in a day or two, right? Because it's gonna wilt, you know? It's like spring wildflowers, you gotta pick them and paint them in the same day. Um, I started, I, I sometimes make like words or phrases out of those little nature -y bits, um, or sometimes just paint an assemblage of things, like this work is my most recent work, so I'm just creating collections of things that I like. Um, and it's all um, hyper-local, it's all from this 20 acres, and it's all mostly native plants. I'm not super strict about that. There are some really cool looking invasive species, and I will plant them, I will paint them as well. <laughs> um, so kind of the big like, overarching motivation for my work is I want to really get to know this piece of land. I mean, I want to cover every inch and see the plants that are growing there and trees and document them. Um, I am not a scientist. I did not, I took the bare minimum of science classes, mm -hmm. but as I've become interested in plants, I've kind of done my own study of botany and really tried to um, understand plant families and plant communities are so interesting, like to learn about the oak hickory woods that are at a, this certain elevation and then like these savanna remnants that are at this other elevation and all the plants that live in those communities. I mean, I could like, I can like really geek out about that. Mm -hmm. um, so not just my little spot outside of Berea, which is really not outstanding, but it also is incredibly outstanding, right? Like we live in a region that is one of the most bio biologically diverse places on the planet. We have so many species of plants and trees here, and I just really want people to know that and to understand like how rich we are in the plant world. Um, so I wanna like, since I'm here on campus, which is it's very cool to be back on campus, um, I wanted to give a little bit of background and say like how I came to be making this work um, and where kind of where I'm headed. So um, when I was a student, 
um, in the art department, I got a little um, summertime grant. I don't know if they still do it. It was called Design for a Summer, and I think okay. it was like for three or four hundred dollars. And I grew a dye garden, and um, I grew indigo and marigolds and dahlias and black-eyed susans, and um, you know, looked at old. Um, uh, uh, like yarn swatches that I found in the fiber studio of someone else's dyeing experiments and just really dug into that. So my senior show um, at Berea was um, naturally dyed um, non-functional um, quilts and sculptural pieces. So this is like um, this is one of the pieces that I made. So this is all um, wool that has been dyed with plant um, bits whether something I grew or something that I foraged. Um, so even then, um, not when you look at this, um, you may not recognize that this has a really significant link to the natural world, but it did and it does, right? So, um, so after I graduated, I um, knew I didn't want to go to graduate school. I didn't want to teach. And I'm like, well, I guess that means I need to make art and sell it, right? Like I got to figure out a way to make money somehow. Um, so I kept making art, I made fiber pieces, um, and just kind of pursued that as my work. Um, I also had two kids, um, so my focus shifted for a while. I still made art, but I also um, did that part-time while I homeschooled my boys. Um, and then eight or so years ago, um, we moved to the land we live on now. And this property is mostly wooded, the only thing man made was a driveway. And we were like, okay, like now what, right? So the way that we kind of engaged with this place was to go for hikes, clear brush, you know, kind of think about like, well, if we built a house, would it be down here in the meadow? Would it be up there on the mountain? Just kind of spending time there. And one January day, which I don't know about you all, like I have a hard time in the winter, right? Like it's gray, it's brown. Everything seems dead, like there's nothing going on, it seems. Yeah. We were just talking about that. Mm -hmm. um, so we were clearing brush, making a burn pile, actually right under where our house is now. And I just noticed, I just got a flash of noticing the color on a blackberry cane, like a wild blackberry cane. They are like, the, even in the winter time, they are like the most beautiful, like burgundy, purpley color with that mm -hmm. hazy white smokiness on top of them. And I don't know why that just caught my eye so um, distinctly. Well, I am like an organizer and cataloger by nature. So I stopped clearing brush mm -hmm. and I thought, okay, I found one color. I found something that's red. I wonder if I can find something like for every color of the rainbow. Like, I wonder if I could put this brush pile in rainbow order. <laughs> um, and so I did. So I like found little specimens, something red, something orange, something yellow, something green, something blue. And I laid it out on a piece of um, roofing metal covering a lumber pile. Mm -hmm. I took a photo of it and I uploaded it to my blog. Um, this was 2013, like when everyone had a blog, right? <laughs> so like, I had a blog and I um, decided that this is going to be a year-long project. So um, this, I did not see this as an art project. I was still making fiber art. I was raising my kids. We were building a house. I was just doing this photography project on the side for a little fun thing. And also to force myself to go for a walk every Sunday and create this photo. So um, after I did that, I was like, oh, like this, I feel kind of like slow now. Like, I'm like, oh, this actually is an art project. Like, you know? Um, so I, st I did a series of um, like bigger assemblages that were um, photos of um, nature things that I found like in different seasons of the year and then organized in different ways. So this one is all like white and gray things. Of course, I did several in rainbow order. Um, but like, I am not a photographer, so like, I was using like, my little point and shoot Canon, you know, photo, which is fine. But I felt kind of separated from this work by having a camera between me and the work. And even though, as I said, like I was not super into drawing or painting, I was like, man, I wish I could like paint this stuff. This would be so cool if it was painted instead of a photograph. Um, 
and then like kind of promptly forgot about that and went on with my life. Um, so then um, a bit later, also still like working, um, you know, spending time on our property, um, I had this inspiration that was so small and I could have just like overlooked it and for whatever reason I paid attention to it and it like literally like changed the course of, of what I'm doing and is still why I'm doing what I'm doing. So, and I love that it's around dandelions because dandelions, you know, you either love them or you hate them, right? And like, <laughs> I love them. They're amazing little plants. Um, and if you think about a dandelion, um, you know, it's got this root that's like a little white carrot, right? It's got this little carroty root coming down. And then if you think about a cross section with the root and then the tap root or the, the little rosette of leaves on top, it makes like a letter T. Mm. I like want to draw it for you, but you can, you can like <laughs> imagine that, right? Like it looks like a letter T. And I was like, oh, the letter T, like, well now I have to make the entire alphabet. <laughs> and now I need to like dig out those old little tiny can of student grade watercolors I have and I draw and paint them. And so I was just kind of so motivated that I didn't worry about the fact that I didn't know how to use watercolors and just made it. Um, and right around this time, it was really fortuitous, um, MACID, which is um, the Mountain Association for Community and Economic Development here in Berea, was doing a entrepreneurship class um, called the Fast Track Kaufman, it's by the Kaufman Foundation. Um, and it was a big commitment, like it's a weeks long class and it's like really digging into entrepreneurship, but I decided to use that as a framework to explore this idea of, of watercolor alphabets. I mean, it sounds crazy. I'm like, oh, maybe this can be a business. <laughs> so that class was like really helpful to help me think about like, well, I mean, actually this does fit, take a lot of boxes in fulfilling how I want to live my life. I want to make art. I want to sell it. I don't want to have a store. Okay, how am I going to sell it? And it kind of helped me figure all that stuff out. As an aside, um, I have an identical twin, Katie Startsman, who owns Native Bagel Company. Woo! She went through, <laughs> I have to bring that up. She went through the same class at the same time when she was planning Native Bagel. So it was like really fun that we were like both in that mode of like brainstorming and dreaming and like scheming and doing it together about our own projects. Um, so when I, after taking that class, I was like, okay, I'm gonna really push this. And fortuitously, my children went to public school at this point. <laughs> Our home is built. Mm -hmm. We're no longer like using the laundromat. You know, we've like got things like figured out on our little homestead. So I knew I would have the full time and energy to devote to my creative work. The, and the heavens opened. <laughs> yeah. So um, since I painted one alphabet, I was like, well, I'm going to paint an alphabet for every season of the year now. So I had to wait for the <laughs> year to pass, right? Um, and so the, I don't have the originals with me, but I have, this one is the um, springtime alphabet. And um, springtime is a really tricky thing to be painting plants because they come and go so quickly. It's like you can never paint them all in one year. And so I actually get really stressed out in the spring, even though everyone's like, oh, you must be so excited about the wildflowers. <laughs> um, so here's my springtime um, alphabet. And um, like also, um, I, I don't need to get into this too much, but figuring out um, how to go from an original painting to a reproduction that you can afford to sell wholesale and retail and you can do it at a scale that makes it so you can make a living is like a whole nother talk for another day that like um, is not my favorite part of my job but like you have to figure that out right if this is your job. Um, so after I did the alphabet project I was like remembering that photography project that I did and wishing like I kind of wanted to do another weekly thing just to like get me in my studio you know keep me working and that was right at the time of the inauguration in 2017 and I was so sick about the hate and vitriol that was being put out into the world by the current administration and I didn't know what to do about it. And so I was like, okay, I paint plants. 
So <laughs> what can I do? And so I decided I wanted to just put love into the world. And that's like was going to be what I was doing. I'm sorry, I'm like getting worked up about it. <laughs> so, um, so that's what I did. So for every week of the year of 2017, I painted the word love with whatever was going on in my woods that week. So this is week number 17. And it has, so the L are the little baby oak leaves when they're just coming out and they're like velvet and they're pink. I mean, they're so weird and cool. The O is a sessile trillium. The V, I mean, iconic, yellow lady slipper. And then E is wild yam. Which is just a funny little vine. It's you know, it's but I I really love um, putting things together that are precious, that what we consider precious, like a yellow lady slipper, and then an oak twig, which there are countless numbers of them, right? Um, so there's one of the loves, and then here's one from the summertime in July, and. Then here's one thing, it was getting tough, this is in August, <laughs> and also like with my first project, my um, first weekly project, I used social media to keep track of this, to share what I was working on, and to hold me accountable. Mm -hmm. Like I need external, not just affirmation, but like external like motivation, <laughs> like where's your weekly painting? You know, like, um, <laughs> So towards the end of this project, it got really hard to make myself keep going. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had a lot of fun. Like this is one of the ones that I began to kind of abstract the um, image. So like the word love could still be there, but it's not the first thing you see maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so the, the, this project, this love project um, was, um, a great way to spend my year and now like most of them are gone like I painted 52 loves and they've like gone off like into the world so it's kind of cool um, so then after doing a weekly project I was like okay that I don't want to do another weekly project right? <laughs> so, so um, then I just kind of got into painting like in my studio practice like I have to balance my own projects so um, like a big painting like this, you know, uh, this is for sale, but it would retail for a couple thousand dollars. I'm not likely to sell that at an art fair out at Indian Fort Theater, right? So I kind of balance making work specifically like laser focused on, I'm making this because I think and know it will sell, mm -hmm. and then making art that I just want to make because I love it. Um, and that has been really important to me to kind of identify who are my customers? What do they want? What do they value? And then using that information um, to paint what I do. Um, so the, um, and actually, so this painting is one that I love, but I did make this like with a more commercial mindset. Um, this is all wild food that you can forage in the region. Um, and so I really, once again, I just realized this dandelion made its way in. <laughs> and um, this is a, this painting also has like a little visual joke in that, you know, everyone loses their mind over ramps. I mean, <laughs> I love ramps, like don't get me wrong, but they are um, threatened and they need all the help that they can get. Like we don't necessarily need to be like harvesting them to eat them. But you know what else we have? We have another allium that pops up in the spring like crazy, and that is like the little wild onion grass that grows in your yard. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, just kind of thinking about um, ramps and how much we value them, and then the onion grass and how much we hate it, you know? <laughs> it's, it's also an edible wild onion. Um, yeah, so um, let's see. And then um, as I've kind of allowed myself to stop painting words, that's very freeing to just paint um, things, right? To paint. So my most recent work is um, this big piece here, and then I've got like a little example. I thought I could pass it around if you guys wanted to see. I was just, I enjoy seeing stuff like this. Um, so the way that I do these paintings is I paint um, the painting, and then I cut it out with an X-Acto knife, and I try not to think about the reality of cutting it out when I'm painting it because some, you know, like this is a little great 
little great thing is a tricky thing to cut out, but yeah. you can do it. You just need a really sharp blade. Um, <laughs> and I like buy my X-Acto knife blades by the hundred pack, so I can just, when it gets dull, I just get a new one. Yeah. That's the only secret I have. So this is a little, um, these are like little oy pink oyster mushrooms. And um, then what I'll do is glue like a little piece of mat board on the back. Mm -hmm. And so they kind of float away from mm -hmm. the um, backing. So just to like increase that like um, tricking your eye so that you might think it's a real little twig or something. So there's that little oyster mushroom. Um, yeah, and so <coughs> when I think about what's next, I want to, um, like, I haven't run out of things to paint, mm -hmm. you know? Like, I'm, and I'm still finding new plants all the time. Um, so I really want to like dig in even further and maybe do um, an artful mapping project. Um, so something that would be kind of scientific looking, but also artful of kind of recording the plants on our place. Um, and then in the in that more like kind of commercial money making vein, I am like thinking about ideas for licensing and. Um, getting my work outside of the region in a way that I wouldn't have to be the one doing the work. I would just be the one happily sitting at home and painting. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to talk a little bit just briefly about um, some ways that I um, have set up my creative um, um, work life flow, which is like a hard thing I think to figure out for yourself. And I thought maybe like sharing some of the strategies that I have developed, like even if you're not an artist, Maybe you would find something helpful. Um, so yeah, so um, I just have a few ideas that have crystallized into the way that I work. And um, one of them, which maybe this sounds obvious, but it took me a while to come to, is that I keep a very, very strict work schedule. My work schedule is as boring as if I worked in a factory. Like my family leaves to come to town and work at 7.30 every morning and I get my cup of tea, and I walk across the studio, and I go to work. And that, keeping that strict schedule um, really helps when I'm not motivated, or when there's like a mountain of laundry that needs to be folded, or you know, all the things that like can press on your time, because like, it's, I gotta go to work, you know? Um, so that has been really important. Um, and I think that sometimes, um, you know, there's a sense about self-employed folks or, or artists that it's like, oh, you know, whatever. Different than that, I'll just say. Um, <laughs> but that is not that is not always true. Um, and the next thing is to make something every day. Um, even on days that I have to do administrative work or I'm doing packing wholesale order, I still have creative work that I do. Um, I think that just helps keep things rolling creatively and also um, I mean you have to make if you're doing this as your job I have to make stuff even when I'm not inspired like even when I don't feel like it right like so just kind of keeping that sense of like this is my primary work my primary work is to make things um, and when I am feeling really inspired and like overwhelmed with ideas I take really extensive notes and lists and sketches and I kind of organize my the next season or the next year so like I already know what I'm going to be working on in January and February of 2020 I already have it like plotted out for myself so even if I'm not inspired like I said like January sometimes I have a hard time I already know what I'm doing and I already have my notes and my sketches so basically at that point all I have to do is like make it mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and I love having like a bunch of those decisions already made um, even if I'm not inspired, I kind of trust my past self that was inspired, right? <laughs> and I kind of like carry out that person's like, okay, I guess this is what I was going to do. <laughs> and like on the whole, that really works out for me. Um, the next thing is to have a laser focus and simplify. So I, like I said, am a creative person. I like to sew clothes. I like to make little wooden miniatures. I like to knit. But my work is painting botanical watercolors. And so in my booth at an art fair or in my wholesale catalog, I don't have hand knit mm -hmm. scarves. Mm -hmm. This is what I focused on. And then similarly, my, my 
simplifying minimalist nature comes in to my art supplies, which is counter to my uh, original nature. Like I am very much a magpie and I mean, who doesn't love a fully stocked art supply store? I mean, with all the <laughs> colors and all the paints and markers and everything. But I have got it narrowed down to like, these are my paints. This is my paint box. I, these are the colors I have. This is it. This is all I'm gonna use. I have three paintbrushes. Those are the only paintbrushes I'm gonna use. And I use arches, cold press, 300 pound watercolor paper, always and forever. I don't need to decide, oh, like what, what am I gonna use for this project? Like I already know what I'm gonna use, like I already made that decision. And I heard a really great, I should like dig it up and try to find it, but this was kind of, um, uh, this idea of simplifying things was, um, what's the word? Um, I found it helpful to hear that Jack White, the musician with the white stripes, said something very similar about the tools that he uses. So he's a guitarist. He is now a famous musician. He could afford to buy thousands of guitars. He has like a handful, and some of them are not great. But he just kind of lets himself be limited by those tools and then goes forward and makes his art with those things instead of seeking out the next best guitar or the next best amp. And I really have found that to be helpful to my own practice. Um, and then finally, um, I think this is more focused towards folks who maybe are like artists or thinking about doing art as a business, but it's really overwhelming and um, distracting to see all the different ways that people make that work for themselves. And especially being someone in a rural place, right? So like I have um, a couple artists who are local, a couple artists who are elsewhere, but that have some similarities with my work that are rural, <coughs> that don't have a brick and mortar shop, um, whose work I love, and then who are a few years ahead of me. And then I just kind of like, you know, use their career, use what they have done, the choices they've made as like kind of helpful to like chart out what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so that has led me to like, um, you know, come up with a strategy. I do retail sales at art shows. I wholesale my work to shops. I license my work and do private commissions and I teach workshops. So when I get asked to do like other random things, I really think like, well, does this fit with like the way that I've chosen to work and live? And if it doesn't fit, even though it might be a great thing, I say like, no, thank you. Because if you don't keep that laser focus, I found, I don't know about you all, but like lots of people have ideas about what I could do, maybe. <laughs> and they reach out to me with like the best of intentions. And so it's really helpful to have like a thing set up for yourself to, to like really think through like, is this part of my bigger vision for my work? Um, yeah, and so I just, um, I think that uh, I'm really, really fortunate to get to live um, uh, my whole life as a creative practice with um, my family and my husband, you know, building my house. I think that stacking firewood can be an artistic thing. I think that baking bread, <laughs> baking bread is another artistic practice, and um, you know, making art with um, with paper and watercolors is um, is one of them. It's just one of them for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to um, oh, I want to share a couple of resources. Um, one is this is a really cool little book called Your Art Will Save Your Life by Beth Pickens. And when I was feeling so despondent and developed the love project, this book is one of the things that helped keep me moving instead of just despairing. Um, so this is a cool little book. Um, she is, Beth is on Instagram, and like if you're, um, she gives like helpful artist pep talks on Instagram. Um, and plant-wise, um, I encourage all of you to start paying attention to plants if you don't already. Um, and this is a field guide. Um, as Wildflowers and ferns of Kentucky, but it's really like for the region. Like there's a map inside, it covers many states. Um, this book is for people who are not botanists and is organized by color and by season. Mm -hmm. So when you find a yellow wildflower in the spring, you open it up 
<laughs> it's like color coded on the edge, which I also love. <laughs> so, you know, in the spring, wildflowers that are yellow, and then you page through until you find it. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of ten is in this book. So I love this book. Another, if you, if you have this book, or like you're already into plants and you want to go like next level <laughs> <laughs> on your plant knowledge, then you need this Bible. This is The Plant Life of Kentucky by Ronald Jones. It is, it is kind of for, for botanists. <laughs> yes. It's a little bit hard to use because it is or for, for people like me who are amateurs. It is organized by plant family. But once you get the hang of it, there is so much information here. It is so rich to really dig in. Um, and I love that it, so it has its um, common name. Sometimes it has like ethnobotany stuff. So like what native folks might have used these plants for. I mean, there's just a lot here. So this is a really cool book, even though it's a big investment. I recommend it. Oh, oh my oh gosh. gosh. <laughs> I just hopefully didn't break it. Fine. Okay. So, um, all right. So to end, I want to share some words. Um, maybe a cliche, but I am a nature artist who adores Mary Oliver. Mm. So <laughs> let's close, yeah. and then you guys, we can ask questions if you have questions. But um, so I love this. Um, instructions for living a life. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. Be astonished. Tell about it. Thanks. <laughs> yes. Neighbor, that was a great presentation, and I love your uh, display, what you've shared with us. Um, are you doing anything with aquatic plants from our pond? I have not done anything with aquatic plants. See? I can do my whole project for next year. <laughs> <laughs> No. Yeah. I haven't done much with um, rocks either. Um, it's hard to paint a rock, you know. <laughs> it, is, it looks like a little gray thing. So, but but the fossil. What made me think of it is the fossil life down at our creek. Like the fossils are amazing that you can find in the creeks. Like how cool would it be to do a series of them? So. Thank you for talking about how you work. I think that's really fascinating and I like hearing about that but when you talk about how you know you're going to do next January or whatever do you ever get to next January and then change your mind and say well I was going to do this but yeah. now I'm going to do that yeah yeah definitely I think it's important to like find a good mix of like making a plan and then not being rigid about it mm -hmm. like actually full disclosure like <laughs> this project was going to be another seasonal or another year-long project I was going to paint a tiny painting, a plant portrait, one for every day of the entire year. Well, these take like three hours to make. <coughs> and so it worked great. In January and February and March, I was like, this is amazing. Like, this is such going to be such a cool project. But then once March came and I started doing shows and I started filling wholesale orders and doing commissions, like, this did not, it was not sustainable. So I allowed myself, I let myself off the hook mm -hmm. and was like, okay. This isn't real. This isn't happening. So yeah, mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Oh yeah. Um, how does the scientific like botany aspect of it sort of start to inform the artistic aspect? It does very much. Um, in that, I want my work to be recognizable. I want. I love it when people with a science background see my work and like compliment or know what it is or say oh you got those leaf nodes just right you know so that I, I don't want it to just be like pretty pictures of flowers I want it to be also like the real thing I think the most intimidating time that happened to me is I paint a lot of mosses and lichens mm -hmm. and a guy who like he's an actual lichenologist <laughs> came into my booth and was like looking at it so closely <laughs> but yeah so that I think that's how um, yeah mm -hmm. uh, two questions okay one how long like would one of those love paintings take you um, they would take me like 12 hours 10 or 12 hours okay and if you are planning like a year ahead of time mm -hmm. I'm wondering 
what does that look like? I write, so I'm yeah. wondering what does that look like during your day? Like, are you spending a certain amount of time envisioning what's going to happen the next year, and then you actually spend a certain number of hours or whatever actually yeah. doing the work? So I know that I've got basically like six hours a day to paint. Mm. You know, and so. Um, on, on days that I paint. I mean, some days I don't. Some days I'm filling wholesale orders or, I, I mean, I didn't really get into like, it's a lot of work to do art fairs, right? Mm -hmm, and yeah. So if, I, if I've gotten to the point, which it took me a while to get there, like that, that is gonna take me 12 hours and I wanna make 10 of them. Mm -hmm. And then I've got this commission over here and that's gonna take me about 30 hours. That's kind of how I start to plan mm -hmm. things out, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I take fewer and fewer commissions, honestly. I mean, I, I like doing that work, um, but it takes so much conversations, so many conversations. <laughs> um, and sometimes I even, like charge, I try to charge a really high fee, so they'll be like, no, thank you. And like, <laughs> that doesn't always work. Yeah, like, sometimes they really want to work. So you have to just tricky to navigate. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm answering your all's questions. <laughs> yes, okay, yeah, okay. Thank you. Yes. Well, like, how many, like, how do you, like, um, how do you, like, do some things, like, how many things have you saw in nature? Like, how many, like, plants, how many mushrooms, oh, how many you leaves? Know, Mm -hmm. I wish I had kept track of that. Wouldn't that have been so cool to keep track of that from the beginning? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wish I had kept track of how many paintings I've made. I haven't. I don't know. Maybe I should start that for 2020. I could keep track of all the plants I see in 2020. Mm -hmm. I love that idea. Thanks, Margo. Mm -hmm. Yes? Your admiring dad says. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to you conversing with the lady who represented the Lexington um, Garden Clubs. Yes. You have segued from amateur to professional. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's the thing, and I think that um, you know, if nothing else, I mean, I got a lot from being at Berea College, but having an art degree, I feel like I have an art license. I can do whatever I want and say that I'm an artist, <laughs> right? Like I know that some artists have a hard time calling themselves an artist, yeah. and I like mm -hmm. don't at all. So that's why I can say like stacking fire. What is an art form? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I meant as a botanist because of oh 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 because of plants. Oh, oh, of plants. About oh the no, triennial plants. no, uh, <laughs> not there yet. You're close. Okay, you're close. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, for example, your the love one. Yep. Takes ten to twelve hours. Yep. Ten to yeah, twelve hours. Yep. Time. Do you do all that in one sitting? And if not, how do you know when it's time to stop? Mm -hmm. Um, I stop when I start making mistakes, and I stop when I have to go pick up my kids from school. <laughs> but usually, I like have to force myself to stop and eat lunch. Like usually, I do do. It. I mean, I don't sit and paint for ten hours, but this like these took me about two sessions to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um, so you said that the way that you work as an artist is basically you work like you are in a factory <laughs> and I know that a lot of people have a lot of different ways that they approach whatever creative right. work that they're doing. Yeah. How did you figure out that having that kind of schedule and working like you are in a factory right. worked for you and your art? I think I realized, I didn't realize that right away, mm -hmm. but as my business kind of grew year after year, I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to like, this is gonna have to really hustle. I'm gonna have to like really hustle to get this stuff mm -hmm. done. Right. And so I think that, um, and j it's just kind of my nature. I'm just like a creature of habit and um, routine. And so I kind of already knew that that would work for me mm -hmm. to get my work done. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned that you catalog things. Mm -hmm. What has been helpful for you in systematically cataloging things so you can go back and find it, like some of those ideas? Oh you my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I am a paper and pencil person. Mm. Um, and I am an artist who does not enjoy having a sketchbook. Mm. But what I do is I buy packs. Of, I mean, this is so basic, but this is what I do. I buy, I use college rules um, notebook paper, mm -hmm. and I like have stacks of that 
um, with different themes or like I have one stack right now that is all stuff that I completed in 2019 and the notes and sketches are all on those big pieces of paper <coughs> um, and I keep track of like the hours it took me on that piece of paper and then I've got ones for what's coming up um, but I can see the limit of that like that is not gonna last me much longer <laughs> because of the volume? Because yeah, because of the volume and just like it's hard to organize. It's hard to be like, oh, I wrote that quote. I think I wrote that quote down on the one that I did about wild food. And then I'm like digging around. So I don't know. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, I am, I am, I, there's hope for me. I, um, I'm teaching myself how to use Photoshop. Um, and I used to hire um, a graphic designer to, um, so when I do my work, I scan it, and then it has to be, the only change that I make is in Photoshop, I have to take out the texture of the watercolor paper that's mm. all white, which my work has a lot of white, and it feels like a major victory that I have taught myself how to do that. It's so basic, but it mm. also was really hard for me. Mm -hmm. So I think that you are right, I'm gonna have to also transition my terrible record keeping to the computer. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I have one question. Yeah. When is your birthday? <laughs> May 19th. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just wondering yeah, about the categorizing. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not always a good thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. This is just yeah. more of a comment. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I just I wish that um, one of our student workers, Magenta, was here. Who, um, she's done the watercolor um, illustrations on the oh, yeah. All those ones on the wall. Yeah. 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 And I just love seeing your work um, of all of these um, Appalachian rooted yeah. base plants yeah. here in the center. Yeah, just cool. So she's so cool. She's cool. Seen I'm her boss. I'm going to make her watch the video. Oh my gosh, I forgot there was a video happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all so much. If there's not any more questions, I really love you. <laughs>